relationship to Jesus. Okay. Today I will attempt to link all these things to, to a united front, all in one big circle. And that is the holiness of our Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. And as Pastor had already alluded, we don't allow technical difficulties to distract or deter or diminish your glory. In fact, nothing man made can do that. It's a fruitless, heartless, and as the word said, it is in vain. We thank you, God, that your message will come across the day and your message will be heard by your people. And I just pray you move me out the way and let your word be a shining and beaming light to your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, First Peter chapter 1, verse uh, 16 is the central thing. But we're going to start in Numbers chapter 3. And First Peter says, you are to be holy, even as I am holy. And so as we turn, and as I ask you to turn, to Numbers 3, verse 4. And say, set free when you get there. Set free. You moan. Set free. Okay. All right, when the Lord saw that Moses, he, when the Lord saw he, Moses, turned aside to look, and God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, meaning God, don't come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for you are standing on holy ground. Moses' sandals had contaminated the soil, and, and God had to tell him not to track that dirt soil on the, on the ground that God was occupying. Did y'all get that? That was four what? Three, I said Numbers 3 verse 4. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm moving ahead. Tell me to slow my roll. Okay. All right. I gave you the wrong description. My bad. But the scripture that does say that, um, I'll get you the, the text later. Moses' sandals had contaminated, and God had to tell him not to track on that dirty soil on, the, on which the Lord had occupied. I think it's Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Anyway, Exodus chapter 20. Let's make sure we are on the right page. This is all, of course, in the book of Exodus, which is what? The book where the, the miracles that God used to liberate his people, supernatural miracles. And now it's explained the natural miracles. And now it's explained the natural miracles. And now it's explained the natural miracles. And, explained the, natural miracles. and the technical glitches keep going. Exodus chapter 20, verses 25. And it says, And if you will make me an altar of stone, you shall build it out of hue. 
few stones. For if you lift a tool upon it, you have polluted it. Verse 6, you shall go, you shall neither go by steps to my altar, that your nakedness be not exposed upon it. So what is that all about, Brother Keith? Yes. What it's about is the holiness of God. Even the altar that was built could not have man-made tools, which again is contaminating the holiness of that stone. And, and a little background information when I was researching this, it says huge stones were special stones that were neither sharpened, that were either sharpened by a stream of water or no, by striking of a rock. So the rock striking the stone, not a handmade tool, but the rock or the streams of running water that sharpened over the years, that sharpened this huge stone. As for the attire that men wore, inner tunics or undergarments back in those days, and there's still some places in the Middle East as well as in Africa where men wear the long robes. And when they step up to the altar, the Lord said, don't even do that because you expose your undergarment. The word nakedness does not mean without clothes, but it was just sharing that the holiness of God is just that high. Amen. He is not. Mm. He is not. And we are not. Mm -hmm. Did y'all catch that? We are not to expose anything to our Lord. And that's how holy he is. And that's the that's the point. And they usually wore these long garments to their ankles. And they were held in place by a girdle made of either cloth or leather. That was their belt. Like we wear this little strip around our waist, man. <laughs> that was their belt. And which was worn over like a coat or a shirt or skirts. In other words, there was no pants in those days. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that's hard for me to figure that out. This is way before pants. Yeah, uh, what it, probably millenniums before pants. Which lead us to point number one. Really. <laughs> There's always someone who trying to say amen before the point is made. Reverential respect is due to our holy God. Should amen. I say that again? Amen. Point number one, reverential respect is due to our holy God. Amen. Now, backtrack to Exodus verse chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19 verses 3 to 6. And this is all in the Amplified, of course. And so Moses went up to God and the Lord called him out of the mountain. Say this to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, verse 4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Verse 5, now therefore, if you will obey my voice in truth and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own peculiar possession and treasure from among and above all peoples. For all the earth is mine. Verse 6. And you shall become to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. There's that word again, holy. Consecrated, set apart to the worship of God. That's what holy means. These are the words you shall speak to the Israelites. There is a cross reference also. That's a biblical, that's a Bible study term found in the New Testament. And if you would like, and I'll wait on you, Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Anybody learn anything tonight, today? I mean, forgot my days and nights. That's what happens when you get old. 
Uh, as my mother used to say, keep living, you'll get there. Amen. Titus chapter 2, 14. Just another example of how the Old Testament is backed up by the New Testament and vice versa. Amen? Amen. All right. Who gave himself on our behalf that he might redeem us, purchase our freedom from all iniquity and purify for himself a people to be peculiar his own people who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is God, that is good and filled with beneficial deeds. This leads to point two. Just wanted to just digest there for a minute. We can have God with us daily. We can have a walk with God daily. He's not hidden somewhere in the tabernacle, a box that was carried with four long sticks. That was the tabernacle. Only the priests could carry that, not the common people like you and I. What a privilege. What a privilege. Amen. As we have read in the Old Testament, the prophets or priests had that privilege, and even then, it was only on special occasions. Note is found in Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to read in the King James, verse 17. And it shall come to pass that in the last day of days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah. Can you believe that? That if we walk that tight with God, that our children will be in to see the dream dreams and some of us old folks will have visions. Wow. That's also found in the Old Testament, the book of Joel, chapter 2, 28 to 32. Point three, which is the final point. The Father's glory is reflected through his children. I said the Father's glory is reflected through his children. Amen. Psalms 15. Psalms 15. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I just thought that one of the most surprising things I found as I began to do this preparation, I said, Lord, how come I never saw this before? The Father's glory is reflected through his children. Are you there? That. Who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? Verse 2. He who walks and lives uprightly and is blameless, who works righteousness and justice and speaks the truth in his heart. Verse 3. He does not slander with his tongue, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor. Your assignment is to read the last remaining verses. You can do that, right? Amen. So, I would like to just share what I think our orders from God are, starting in verse 1. We are to live with him in obedience on earth and in heaven. Verse 2. We are to walk straight with no selfish agenda. Stand for God's truth, which is expressed in his holy word. Verse 3. They, meaning those of us who walk with the Lord, don't badmouth people. They don't backstab friends. 
It will start or cause dissension among non-family members. Verse 4, they don't hate on the unrighteous. Respect those who reverence Jesus. Verse 5, they give money and possessions at a loss. If they loan, they don't profit from it. They don't take kickbacks or money under the table. This, in simple terms, is how a person of holiness lives. Me? I have a long way to go, said Me too. What say you? Standing on holy ground, we represent 